initiative. That measure would reduce more, most car tabs to about 30 bucks. And you can see right now about 55% approving, 45% saying no. King 5's Drew Mickelson's covering the yes on I-976 campaign in Bellevue, backed by the anti-tax activist Tim Iman. What's the latest? Well, Joyce, those numbers that you just read have really been pretty constant since the initial uh, release of the results around 8.30 tonight. And that's when Tim Iman declared victory here at the Bellevue Hyatt, saying he has sound transit and politicians to thank. Now, if the initiative passes and those numbers hold, Initiative 976 would cap car tab fees at 30 bucks. Iman predicted victory, saying voters are fed up with taxes. The initiative would eliminate hundreds of dollars in extra charges put in place by cities, state laws, and sound transit. The state says if the early numbers hold and it passes, billions of dollars in car tab revenue will be lost, money that has already been earmarked for public transportation and road construction and maintenance plans for years. Iman says voters were misled by sound transit in 2016, and the car tab sticker shock tonight caused voters across the state to fight back. Honesty won. The voters want it to be honest, and I think they, they believe that we were correct, that it was a dishonest tax. So I think honesty won at the ballot box because the voters finally had a chance to be able to go, enough with the dishonest tax, let's bring in something that's actually honest. Expects this, if it passes, to end up in court, which he's had to deal with on initiatives of his in the past. If that happens, his attorney will be State Attorney General Bob Ferguson. The Attorney General is required to defend initiatives that are passed by the voters. Ferguson has, of course, been very critical of Iman in the very recent past, and Iman called that, quote, something delicious. For the other side of this debate, we're now going to go to Seattle, where my colleague Glenn Farley is live. Glenn? Well, Drew, this is the headquarters for the no on 976 group. And remember, they're the ones that are a coalition of business organizations, uh, environmental groups, labor groups, others who spent the money for all those ads you have been looking at for weeks and weeks. But that does not appear to have worked so far, even though the no side, and things are pretty well shut down here in Seattle at this party, people filtered out a while ago. Uh, they're not conceding yet, saying, look, there are hundreds of thousands of other ballots out there that haven't been counted in our all mail-in ballot system. But one of the people that I talked to tonight is Senator, State Senator Reuven Carlisle of Seattle. He's on the Senate Ways and Means Committee. He's a guy that deals with taxes and a lot of the financial stuff within the legislature. And I asked him, I said, if the no vote ultimately fails here, where does it go from here? People have an image that we have one modest savings account as a state in our regular operating, in our normal budget. It's like your normal family budget. And we have a, a little bit of savings and we need to hold on to that. The fact of the matter is that you can't spend that three, four, five times from transportation and operating budget and uh, capital infrastructure like schools and buildings and others. So lots of people want to spend that. It's a modest savings account. And every family in the state knows that you just can't spend your, your one savings account three times. And what he's pushing back against there is Tim Iman's contention that all of this can be that can be made up. What they're losing in terms of state transportation dollars coming in can be made up for in terms of the rainy day fund. That's several billion dollars that exists now. Reuven Carlisle says that is not going to be able to stretch that far. Live in Seattle, Glenn Farley, King 5 News.